Are they gone? Are the haters gone? I think they might be gone, lads. I think that I think the evil people are gone. I think we're fine. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a brand new video, guys. Today, we're going to be covering a theory. Now, this is part two, actually. So you guys may remember, we did a theory a few days ago, or uh, basically a day or two ago. We did a theory video about specifically um, the map, right? We did a uh, new discoveries of the map in Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield on the Galar region. Now, in that video, I broke down a lot of aspects of the actual subject, being, you know, uh, a lot of the parts of the map. We broke it down, we talked about it. A lot of weird things, right? A lot of weird things. But, ladies and gentlemen, here is part two that I promised you. So, we're going to go through everything again. Uh, different stuff. Not the stuff from the previous video, but new stuff here that kind of matches up. This is why I want to make this into a two-part video, by the way. Because there was stuff in that one that I couldn't really cover or talk about. So, I thought I'd do it in this one. So, let's get right into the actual information, ladies and gentlemen. Starting with this right here. So, first of all, big thank you to your boy, uh, Taito Fox here on um, Twitter for sending this my way. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Taito. And also, of course, a big thank you to Flyer Fenix here for actually making this little theory here and putting it together. Because uh, I think it's really, 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 really really intriguing and a lot of people have talked about this but uh, I haven't seen like a full breakdown of it which I think is pretty cool and that's what uh, Taito did here uh, broke it down fully and also there's another one from PLH uh, PLDH uh, nets here on um on Twitter as well. This one's slightly different, but I thought I might as well include this as well because it breaks down a few extra things that work really well with the other stuff here we see from Taito Fox. So let's break down what Taito Fox here uh, translated for us and what you know originally was written by uh, Flyer Fenix here. So shout out to Flyer Fenix, shout out to Taito Fox. It'll be linked down below, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get right into the actual information. So this theory belongs to Fly uh, Flyer Fenix. I'm just translating it. All good, man. In the snowy city at the end of the trailer, there are four banners, equaling four kingdoms or thrones. Indeed. I mean, if you really compare this like really well, uh, you know, if you look at like, for example, Game of Thrones, right? Which, by the way, we got your boy over there. I'm not sure if you guys can see it, but we got uh, the Song of Ice and Fire. Like, I got a T like a, not TCG set, but, like, basically a, uh, like, a board game. Um, but if you look at, like, Rushteros from, like, Game of Thrones, it is essentially based on the War of the Roses and also based on, in terms of, like, uh, actual... Uh, typography and all that, like, sorry, geography. It's based on, um, you know, the UK, right? That's what Westeros is based on. And there are several kingdoms there. So this game having kingdoms related to it, and the fact that, you know, when you think of, like, the, you know, the UK itself, there have been several different, you know, little kings, queens, lords, and etc., all that sort of stuff uh, that have ruled around, you know, around there for a long time. You know, before the Scots were, you know, part of the UK, they were their own people with their own kings and all that sort of stuff in the past. It's a little bit strange, right? But, um, let's continue. Four kingdoms or thrones. The kingdom of the tower, which is the one right there, as you may see, uh, it's right like under my face, right there. You got the Kingdom of the Crown, I think, which is uh, the one that's right over, uh, right over. Let's see if we can just like get the image up. Right over here, uh, you got that, and then over there on the other side, you've got the Kingdom of the Wheel and the Kingdom of the Flower. And if you actually look at the map, it seems like they really break that down like pretty well. And right here, he says that the Kingdom of the Flower, Elite Four One. Uh, represents uh, represented by the vast uh, roots with vegetation and rural zones at the outskirts of the uh, walls of the other kingdoms. If you look right down here, it makes a lot of sense, right? Like the first kingdom being based on, I guess, the, uh, you know, the tower, I guess that would this one be, or the flower, sorry. Uh, I said flower tower. Either way, the flower one would make sense, right? Because it, it makes sense with the area. The typography is, uh, you know, the bottom part, I think, is like Scotland. That's what people were saying, like, that the map is with, it's the UK, like, twisted upside down. Uh, and that this would be Scotland, specifically, and you're starting from a Scottish region, where the, you know, the symbol would be the flower region. It's a more open. I mean, you clearly see it, right? It's really open here. You've got the tower right there. Um, that tower specifically, actually, and the lake here is very, you know, reminiscent of uh, the Loch Ness, you know, I mean, um, the Loch Ness uh, Lake or whatever, like, where, wherever that is, and, like, a tower right next to it, or, like, a little castle area right next to that, so it's a very open amount of space, right, you got open space, a few houses, um, you got the little forest down here, you can clearly, seemingly enter that as well, it's very, it's very clear, like, you know, what they're going for here, the Kingdom of the Tower, though, which is Elite Four Number Two, is what they're trying to say, which basically, each one of these, like, kingdoms would have one of them, one of their, like, uh, lords or whatever, being one of the people part of the Elite Four, the Kingdom of the, the Tower, uh, the first great city, Edinburgh, uh, I actually, I I think this is in Edinburgh, though. I think this actually is uh, Manchester. I think this is Manchester. The reason I say it's Manchester is because uh, this city right here, if you actually look at images comparing it like Manchester and this city, they look far more alike. They look so akin to each other. It's actually uh, kind of like uncanny in a way. But um, let's see. Without any contact with the outside, even with its own river within the walls, you can see right there it does have a river that's like running through the whole thing. Uh, and you've got like the river running through around the city. Very closed in, very, you know, its own thing. So that would be the Tower Kingdom, uh, assuming, you know, assuming we're, you know, going correctly here. And the Kingdom of the Crown, of course, which I I pointed out there is a crown on the um on like the the dragon city right which is the one like right above the uh kind of like um 
I don't know. There's kind of like a steampunk-esque city that you have right here, which I assume is like either Edinburgh or uh, Manchester, but I think it's more likely to be Manchester. I could be wrong, though. Uh, the Game of the Crown, Elite 4-3, with the dome on the main tower, uh, home of the wolves, divides its border with the Great Northern Rock Wall. Um, now, I'm not sure about the house, home of the wolves. I think it's more likely to be the home of the dragon, I guess. Uh, I think it's a more likely thing, but who knows. And then the final one here is the King of the Wheel, Elite 4, represented with the London Eye, and, uh, but it's possible that the banner represents the Great Tower in, uh, wait, in the city based on London. And of course, you got like you know uh, the London Eye. You got uh, the House of Parliament, a Big Ben, a Big Ben esque looking building, and of course the giant tower in the middle, which I assume the Elite Four would be in. And yeah, I mean, generally speaking, uh, it makes a lot of sense, right? These all these kingdoms being kind of like you know a part of the general region makes a lot of sense, though. Now, next thing here, and again, major shout out to PL, PLDH here for uh, coming up with this. Uh, check out the you know the Twitter here. I'm gonna link this all down below, guys. Show him some love. Sorry about the phone. Uh, show him some love, though. Please do. Uh, but here's what he brings up here, which I think is really interesting is that in the Pokemon Sword and Shield trailer, we get a glimpse at the four flags with four symbols, perhaps a parallel to the United Kingdom's coat of arms and the United Kingdom's four countries. Wales is not on the coat of arms. And you see right here, you got the, you know, the different ones kind of mashed together. Uh, and down here, you also, you know, mentions that this screenshot, uh, by the way, is taken in a city where there's a large building with a design very similar to the famous British Museum. And right there, you can see that uh, very clean design, honestly. And you got like the entrance here having the... Um, the hidden language, which, you know, uh, the new Game Freak-esque language in these games. It's really cool. And you can see, like, a clear image of the actual, you know, um, like, the actual banners. They're right there. Very clear images of them. Um, and, of course, you have this, like, I, I would, yeah, we would assume this is the area, right? Because the, like, the, the stuff around matches up with this place right there. Um, which should give you an indication that this place is pretty, area is pretty big, I would assume. The city's got to be pretty, you know, large. And here's the actual real-life museum comparison, so you can kind of see, like, why this mishmash kind of matches up really well. Um, and yeah, if you go down here, I think he also answered a question which more people are asking. More evidence of there being, uh, other, uh, UK countries included. Can't remember if Sun and Moon only, only revealed one island at first, and they said the map, when released, had all islands on it. The extent of the game is most likely on the map they've released. All four regions slash tribes slash whatever could be spread across the one map. And, uh, then it's continue here saying that well that cuts that theory down to but I, I, I will still hold out hope that we can go to Kalos post game similar uh, similar to gold and silver now I don't want to go into the Kalos theory just yet because I feel like I'm going to do a different video on that with some other like information some you know uh, you know people like been getting a lot of information together about like proof and all that sort of shit you know there's a lot of that there's a lot of that so I'll be doing that in a separate video just so you guys know that's going to be in a separate video but as for this though I want to personally give my opinion on this I think this makes 100% sense right again do the comparison with like you know the, just the UK's history right you've had all that stuff there and if you go back to the other video I did the first part of this like session of videos here if you remember what I said the War of the Roses was a thing, right? Having all these countries, you know, when you think of the UK, right, you've got like, what, you've got Wales, you've got England, you've got uh, Scotland, and you've got Northern Ireland, right? Those four together make up four different countries. Those four together are, could be considered four different kingdoms, give or take, right? Not exactly, but, you know, give or take. And right here, you have four different, you know, flags representing different kingdoms. And breaking them down here logically makes sense, right? The bottom kingdom would be the Flower Kingdom because it's it's lush, it's beautiful, it's a countryside. Um, even when you look at the trailer, if you go rewatch that, you'll notice it's a really luscious place, far more luscious than any of the other places, and as you go further up, it gets more and more industrial. And I think, like, if you do a comparison to the UK, and, like, twist it up, and, of course, if we assume that starting down here would be equal to starting to, in Scotland, if you do that comparison, right, and go, you know, go down from Scotland down to England, and you go from up and down, you will notice that there's a really nice, like, matchup. There is one issue, though, that I will mention, and it's very, very much present in this image right here. So, as you may remember, this part of the map, like this actual, like, frozen area, that part of the map is actually in the northern part of the map, right? But the problem is, if the map is an upside-down uh, version of the UK, then the colder parts would logically have to be down, you know, at the bottom, if they were following the logic of how that looks like. But maybe they didn't do that, maybe they just went with, like, you know, just the general, like, idea of it, right? Because you gotta remember, when, with Game Freak, they will do things that they make sense and match up real well, but they won't go exactly 100% that way, which you assume it to be. So, ladies and gentlemen, I wanna ask you a question real quick in this video. If this ends up being real, do you think we'll be having the option to actually join one of these kingdoms and be part of them? Or are we going to be doing some sort of like mission thing where we have to like bring all these kingdoms together all these like you know different lords and you know these families these houses right are we going to be bringing them all together or are we going to be fighting for each one of them like what do you guys think we're going to be doing because clearly if we are as a player are starting from anywhere then we're going to be starting from the flower kingdom if that makes any sense right because that would be the bottom part like right down here you know that was that would be where we are starting from so in a logical sense we would be part of that kingdom no matter how we twist it and i guess we, we'd be scottish lads we'd be scottish so that'd be awesome dude i can't do a scottish accent so i'm not even going to try I don't want to disrespect my Scottish viewers, but um, 
I assume that's where we're we going to be starting from. So, ladies and gentlemen, I want to know your opinions on this, though. What do you guys feel about this? Do you think this makes a lot of sense? Uh, three, having three different houses uh, split up differently, do you think that makes a lot of sense? Let me know in the comment section down below. And before we end this video, guys, I uh, quickly just want to give a shout-out to the shirts that we have on sale, ladies and gentlemen, because they're still on sale for a little bit longer. Uh, I mean, they're going to be on for a while, but, you know, if you want to pick one up, guys, we got shirts that are still on sale. Team Sword, Team Shield. We got socks that are overpriced. Do not buy the socks that are overpriced. Do not get them. Uh, and a hoodie that's overpriced. Don't get the hoodie either. It's too overpriced. But if you want to get a t-shirt, um, get one of those. It'd be appreciated if you guys do get it. It does support the channel. So yeah, if you guys want to check it out, please do so. Either way, it's going to be the end of the video, guys. I would love to know what you guys think about this. Like, what is your opinion on this theory? Again, like I said, it makes a lot of sense when you match it up with our current situation, you know, our, sorry, not current situation, but rather, uh, you know, history of the UK, right? The War of the Roses, etc. That being them, you know, interpreted into different ways. For example, Game of Thrones, having different houses, warring it out with each other. The different cities and different positions kind of based on the real, you know, like, real England. And also, um, you know, legendary. So you think a legendary will be attached to each one of these, like, houses? And that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that, like, maybe each one of these houses is going to have their own individual, you know, legendary. Like, maybe the, the, like, if you look right here, maybe the crown is gonna have like the you know the sword um, you know, starter, uh, sorry, the sword legendary, right? Which would be the, the sword wolf, right? That would be that one. And maybe the other one right over here, the um, I'm not sure which one that was, I think that was the wheel. Uh, maybe the wheel, uh, you know, kingdom. Maybe they specifically will have the, uh, you know, the shield wolf. And then the other two might have the other two legendaries in the game we might get. You know what I mean? Maybe these guys are going to have some, you know, the guys with the uh, the castle or whatever. Or, the you know, maybe the guys with the crown could be the ones with the dragon. Or the ones with the castle could be the ones with the, one of the wolves. Or none of them have any of the wolves, but each of them have another different legendary. I definitely think a legendary will be attached to each one of these kingdoms in one way or another. Or each one of these, like, you know, uh, family slash houses slash, you know, uh, lords, ladies, whatever. I think there's going to be a legendary attached to each one of them, though. But either way, ladies and gentlemen. That's going to be the end of the video. If you did enjoy, then drop a like down below and let me know in the comment section down below. What do you guys feel about this? What are your opinions? Personally, I think it's highly likely. I've got another actual, my own theory that I really want to kind of discuss a little bit further on because uh, it matches up really well with this. And I kind of want to do a comparison between Game of Thrones and this and how this could match up really well and be one of the best Pokemon games of all time because I'm really excited. I love Game of Thrones. I already said it before. I've got that dash shit over there. I love Game of Thrones. I uh, can't wait to play that board game, by the way. It's going to be sick. But um, yeah. Let's just uh, end the video right here, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, drop a like down below, guys. If we can hit 500 likes on this video, then uh, maybe I'll do another video later tonight, something, you know, like that. Who knows? Maybe I will, maybe I won't. I don't know. Either way, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. My name is Rolf Rowlett. Have yourselves a great day, and bye-bye, ladies and gentlemen.